I'm here to state that I'm here to refute what um, my opponent said. And the two claims I'll be focusing on are um, the first one, which said was that the SAT is biased towards um, to biased towards wealthier people. And the other thing I'll be refuting against is that the SAT is not a fair prediction <coughs> of um, what how a student will perform in their four or five years of college. So the first one what I'll be refuting against is the one about wealthier whites and Asians who get paid, who pay tutors to um, help them, help them with their SAT scores. And so according to um, Admin Gadmini, and he, this is a website that he talks about how um, rich students do receive tutoring, but that doesn't limit just the tutoring for SAT. These students also, um, received tutoring for high school classes, and he quotes, allotting a greater, role, a greater role to the GPA in the admission process incorrectly assumes that rich students receive tutoring for the SAT, but not for their high school classes and tests. So these students who receive tutoring for, the, for their SAT um, questions and improving their points will also probably get tutoring for their high school GPA and so it pretty much eventually what happens is these richer students already have a leverage in the sense that their <coughs> GPA is already higher than a lower income student. So if we abolish the SAT, it takes away the objectiveness of what a lower income student would have because now their GPA is lower and they probably might not have as many extracurricular activities. And as if they don't have this SAT to help them um, level themselves with these other rich students, then they have a lower percentage of um, getting into college. And another point I like to bring up is that the college, even though lower income students may not have the ability to go to tutors and get the get help from these tutors, they do have other options of finding ways to um, learn how to score better on the SAT. So College Board, the, the website, or the pretty much the people who organize the SAT, they offer fee waivers for lower income students. And on their website, it says, high school students in the United States who cannot afford to pay test fees may be eligible for fee waivers. Two fee waivers for the SAT and two fee waivers, fee waivers for the SAT too. So if a student takes the test and they feel like they haven't done as well as they wanted to, they can apply for a fee waiver and they can retake the test and that might help them score, help their score better. And usually colleges like to look at the higher score of the student. So if a student received a lower score, then that score wouldn't really be considered for that student who's applying to college. Another thing that the college board also states is that everyone gets to send four um, gets four free scores to send with registration, and with the fee waiver, you can send it to an additional four free, they get an, an additional four free score sets. What this tells us is that lower income students have the opportunity to send their scores to a variety of colleges instead of just one or two, thus increasing their chance of, they're putting themselves out in, um, in the college admissions process, so they probably will have more of an opportunity to get into college. Another thing I would like to bring up is that College Board offers, um, they have a, an <coughs> official practice SAT test that you can use. They also have an SAT questions of the day. And many students have access to a, a library nearby in their school or in their community. And these libraries offer SAT books and preps that these students can use to prepare themselves for the SAT. So even if lower income students do not have a tutor, they can still they still have ways to find help to get um, to improve their scores. My next point I like to bring up is uh, oh the next claim that I'm refuting is that the SAT is not a fair predictor and a better predictor of the of a, a student in their college years would be the SAT subject test. The SAT subject test is a test that focuses on one subject, so a student would have to prepare themselves in one subject, like math or English, and they would take that exam in that one subject, and it's about maybe an hour or two, depending on each test. The SAT is an overall around, um, is, a, is a, a test that um, goes through math and writing and um, um, reading skills. So first of all, the SAT 
shows a college how um, well-rounded a student is. And another thing I'd like to bring up is that the colleges do not only use the SAT test to, um, to help them decide who gets into their college and who doesn't. Colleges, colleges like to look through their students, they look at the applications and they find students who are well-rounded in academics if they've done community work, if they've done volunteering and things like that. In one By abolishing the SAT, what happens is these colleges no longer have an objective reasoning on what to do with these. Uh, the, they don't know. They don't have an objective um, stance for these students, and this doesn't help because if the SAT is um, eliminated, they need a, they need to find a way to fairly choose between different students. And if there's no longer an SAT, then these students will have to rely on high school GPAs, their letters from their teachers, and these can easily be flawed because one, um, how rigorous a course is in one school may be completely different to how rigorous a course is in a different school. So because of that, the colleges can't determine who is, who is actually doing more amount of work. And also colleges would like students who are well-rounded in a sense that they do multiple things and not just the SAT. So the SAT doesn't, isn't the only thing that colleges look at when they want to choose a student. They look at many different things. So in this sense, the SAT does help predict how students will do in a four-year college.